Hi everyone and welcome back to this video where I'll be continuing to work on my new Noodle project, specifically focusing on how to set up the back end of the project. So I have videos like this already um, from the past where I was using the Noodle cloud service backend. The advantage of this backend was that all of the Noodle nodes like sign up, log in, create record, they're all automatically um, fed with the data that you have from your backend. It's all synchronized between the nodes and the backend. So it's a it's a big advantage and a time saver over using something like the Xano prefab or the Superbase prefab or the Directus prefab, which is great if you want to use those backends, they're super useful, but it still takes more time to set up. Whereas the Noodle nodes, if you're just trying to test it out, get going quickly, I'd really recommend doing it with the Noodle nodes, even if you think you might swap them out one day for some other backend, you can swap them out. Noodle is great like that. It's just a front end builder. So if you need to swap out the logic that communicates with the back end, you can do that. Um, you, you know, if your project takes off and you need a new back end, you get some budget, um, you know, get somebody to get in there and develop a, a switch to a different back end. It's fine. So I wouldn't worry about that. I just worry at the beginning about people giving up because they don't have the time or patience to get through a Noodle project. So um, I want to show you how I've worked with. Um, a new version of the Noodle backend. Why a new version? Because the original Noodle backend is no longer maintained. There are some forks of it, like Fluxscape, for example, where the guys behind that have made a lot of upgrades to the Noodle backend, that's great. Um, but the original Noodle one that's freely available uh, and open source is uh, not has not been changed since last year when they went open source or beginning of this year. Um, and so we've, I've, and the Low Code Foundation have taken it upon ourselves to try to build a better backend using still the same Noodle nodes. Um, so all of the nodes, including the file upload node, except the cloud functions. So we've managed to make a better backend, but we have not managed to um, to replicate how Noodle did the cloud functions. So if you do use this backend, just keep in mind that this cloud functions panel will be useless. It won't do anything. Um, but it'll be replaced by the fabulous N8N Cloud Function Builder, which, okay, it's a new tool to learn, but I think you'll agree that it's 10,000 times better than the Noodle Cloud Functions ever were in terms of um, power and flexibility and integrations. So what you're gonna wanna do is um, download the code from the Open Noodle Better Backend. Uh, follow the guide here on getting started. So you're gonna to have to open up your terminal and run this dot um, slash setup.sh script, which will set up all of the different services, parse dashboard, and and minio, traffic, and dozzle, which I'll show you what they do in a minute. And uh, then you're good to go. If, you can, if you've can, if you managed to do that successfully, then you'll have um, this uh, Docker container running with all these little, uh, a Docker project, I guess. No, it's a container with all these little blocks containers, mini containers, sub containers running. Um, and you can check that they're working by going to your browser and typing, for example, um, dashboard.localhost will take you to um, the parse dashboard for your app, which is basically the same as the Noodle one. So you're gonna wanna add a new backend to your Noodle cloud services. And it's gonna look something like this with the app ID that you put into the um, the Docker Compose file, the master key you put in the Docker Compose file, and the endpoint as well that you put in the Docker Compose file. So it, it will likely be parse.localhost slash parse. We'll link you up to your backend. Um, if you open the dashboard, you'll have the same interfaces with the Noodle cloud services interface, um, but, um, well, but nothing. It's the same interface, that's fine, but maybe the but is you also have access to a more modern parse 5.1 dashboard, which will give you the same interface with the browser and the config, but you're also gonna have access to webhooks, which are really, really powerful if you want to, say every time a new user is created, you wanna fire off a welcome email without having to use cloud functions or N8N, you can just add a webhook and say that this is gonna be uh, after save on the user class, we're gonna call the um, N8N dot whatever you're thing is webhook and it means that every time a user saved it'll send the data from that um, record to whatever the webhook is every time which is super useful also before delete after delete maybe before a user's deleted you want to send us we're sorry to see you go email so fire off some some data to n8n or to brevo or whatever it is you want to do 
um, to make that function run. So that's super cool, something that was not available in the uh, the original backend. Well, it technically was available, but you would have had to install Parse Dashboard yourself anyway. Um, there's also logs, which can be handy if you want to debug stuff, but I'll show you another way to log in a minute. Uh, jobs, I, I'm not capable of doing myself because it requires coding and uh, I'm not sure it would work um, through Noodle, but it's something to be researched in the future for sure. I would love to have cloud jobs and scheduled jobs and stuff like that running um, in my back end. And the API console could be really helpful for some of you who are interested in um, doing manual API calls to your back end because there's a lot of parse functions that aren't available in Noodle because there's no node for it, but you can do it just with a basic um, uh, API call, which you could do probably preferably from your N8N instance so that you can hide your master key and uh, app ID and stuff like that. You don't really want to call your parse backend from the front end directly because that would definitely expose your app ID or master key unless you use the config node. But even then, it, theoretically, it could be um, accessed uh, and, and hacked. So probably better using it from through N8N. But anyway, it means you can test, for example, getting all users, um, from users class, this. I haven't tried this yet. <clears throat> no, I don't know. Send query. Anyway, there's no user, so it's fine. But that would give you the results of a particular query and help you to debug, trying out request parameters and stuff like that. Anyway, this might not interest you, but just wanted to show that that exists. Um, maybe if somebody's really interested in GraphQL, we can install that part in the future. And there's also a part for the SDK. So if you're super um, hardcore and you're using the parse SDK on your front end, then you can actually test out what would happen um, with parse commands in uh, in this JavaScript console. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's cool for parse. Um, other things you need to have a look at are, as I said, n8n. So you're gonna wanna set that up with just some basic data. Oops, that's not my email, but it doesn't actually matter because the emails don't work. I haven't set up the SMTP part of it yet. Just type in old random. Oh, okay. Have to have a password zero style password. Fine. I don't want any project updates. Um, so this is N8N work cloud um, server side workflow builder. So you're going to have uh, webhooks here with a webhook address, which you're going to use from your project as you know this local host address. Uh, you're going to do a, a get, I suppose, with whatever path it cares, and then we're going to return data from the webhook, respond to webhook. And we're going to say JSON, and we're going to say response equals subdog. And that, and we'll save that. And we're going to, oh, we can't because, yeah, we can. And then we're going to test it out. And we're going to call this from noodle. Call this API endpoint. No key needed. And output the result. Okay, okay, okay. Did that work? Oh, I'm not on that page. What page is this? Sign up to be on the page, of course. Dumb. And there we go. Oh, error. Response parameters. Oh, yeah, okay. Sorry. I have to respond at the response to webhook node. And we're going to test that again. Refresh that. And sup, dog. There you go. So I'm communicating between Noodle and N8N, and N8N shows me the results of what I've done. I can look at the executions and see exactly what happened. Like, why did that one error out? Because it isn't used the right um, webhook settings, and so then the one that was successful responded successfully, and here's the headers. Oh, goodness, look at all that data on my MacBook. Wonderful. Um, so yeah, that's like already 10,000 times better than the original Noodle Cloud functions because you've just got so much debugging data and so much possibility to um, to really work on cloud functions without the horrors that were the original uh, 
Noodle Cloud Function debugging. Um, what did I want to say about that? The, some annoying things you might find about N8N is there's like peppered around the place. There's little things of, oh, you could do this if you just paid. If only you paid, like debug an editor looks really exciting. <gasps> I'm going to be able to put that in my editor to get the data. Oh, if I had an enterprise plan, I could do that. So just you have to ignore those things, but you can have as many workflows as you want. You can have as many executions as you want. Um, and you're going to be able to use this and parse server later on when you deploy your project to production in AWS, you're going to be able to make your own using app runner. For example, you make your own N8N -N instance and you'll just export every single one of your workflows and you'll import them into your AWS instance. It's literally, literally that easy. Um, you'll have to maybe replace some um, authentication keys and stuff like that that um, you've created along the way, maybe for HTTP request you're doing or whatever. But um, I've already done this moving from a self-hosted instance somewhere like on my computer to, to in the cloud. And it really, you just have to go through each step and make sure that the bits are correctly configured for, for the new address that they're on and then change out your noodle address from localhost to NADN live AWS version com and yeah easy peasy so i'm just i'm not trying to sell you on this because it's an open source tool but i'm trying to say for me this is like so way really worth the sacrifice of the cloud functions um so that's n8n okay for file uploads you're going to be using something called uh, so we're talking about when we're using the upload file node we're going to be using uh minio so mineo.com slash sorry dash console dot localhost will take you here. So Mineo is a, th a S3 object storage. So it replaces AWS S3, which you'll use when you move into production. So just while you're messing around locally is a really handy way just to have um, an S3 account to uh, be able just to manage permissions and things like that that you might want to manage in S3 later, not just relying on the parse storage. Um, so it'll automatically create a bucket called parse bucket. You're going to want to go in here and the first thing you're going to want to do before you start anything is configure it and set the access policy to public. It'll be private by default, set it to public. I don't know why. Maybe in the future I'll be able to change that and make it different. But right now you have to manually set it. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you'll be able to um, upload files. So do our file picker. And we're going to do that instead. And we're going to do file, file, success, upload. And then we're going to have a cloud file and a cloud file, the cloud file, just to see what it looks like. And I think that's all we need yet. Let's test it out. Oh no, it doesn't work. Where am I? I'm on the sign up page. Yes. Open the file picker then, dude. We need an on-page button. Maybe it needs to be something on-page. Be my mistake. Yeah. So let's upload uh, this PDF. So upload file. Did it work? No, it doesn't look like it. Oh well, it was working. So why would it not be working? We can. Oh, because of the file name. No, no, it looks good. Okay, then we're going to go and find out. So one of the other things we have in here is a service called Dozzle. So if you have any bugs like I've just experienced, then you can go and have a look at Dozzle and see if you can find out what happened, uh, which it doesn't show me. That's great. Uh, no, we're not going to get that answer there. Maybe here. Connection refused. Ah, okay. All right, so I've got a little problem with the connection anyway that theoretically would have uploaded the file and then shown us the cloud file and we would have been able to see uh, the file here uploaded in the in the Mineo console. It did work before, I promise you, and it'll work again. But um, it's a handy way to get used to how we're gonna be uploading files and uh, have those connections ready in your app. And then when you publish the live, you're just gonna be changing the destination of the S3 connection, but the actual logic that you've got here, all these nodes are gonna stay the same because they're just, the cloud files are just gonna be stored somewhere else in AWS S3 or, <coughs> excuse me, GCP um, object storage or whatever. So um, that's another another good way to start. 
um, any other services I haven't talked about yet. So traffic is just keeping everything rooting in the right direction. MongoDB is running as the database in the background. Uh, Redis is running to make um, any uh, common searches through the parse dashboard um, indexed so that you can start getting faster searches. Um, which you don't need again right now, but it's good to have that set up so that when you deploy into S3, you can set up your own Redis or whatever the S3 equivalent is in Amazon, uh, not S3, and whatever the AWS equivalent is um, and, and have Parse do maybe more index searches. So you're starting to get ready for when your database is getting bigger and bigger and there's a lot of searches going on for some particular blog posts or something like that, that, that can start being to be indexed in Redis and uh, delivered much, much faster to the front end. Um, I think that's about it. So that is the, the back end that I'm going to be using for this project. I'm going to have to get in and start adding um, fields. Like uh, I know that my users don't have any name fields yet. So we'll have to add some first name field and uh, last name fields, stuff like that, which will then give me the correct connections here when they put in their full name, but it's not going to be their full name, it's going to be their first name. And that's going to go to, uh, oh, don't have that. Okay, fine. We'll refresh. No, it still don't have it. Okay, well, I'll look that up. Find out why that's not working. And okay, cool. Anyway, so I've got my backend set up and that's me good to go. If you're interested in the new Noodle backend, then check out the, the repo in the Low Code Foundation organization, Open Noodle Better Backend. And probably in future videos, I'll be showing you how the Mineo problem was fixed and uh, whatever that problem was with the first name field is fixed. So it's the beginning, but I think this is, um, you're gonna definitely like having N8N as a cloud function provider. And I think, uh, having um, the parse dashboard to be able to set up webhooks is a game changer too. And just knowing that you have control, more control over the back end uh, in terms of security and debugging and testing, um, I think that's gonna be something that's that's important for people um, to take this next step in the evolution of Noodle. So um, hopefully making more videos about this in the future. Hope you enjoyed that and uh, take care. See you in the next one.